sports figures, and he gave me a quote when I was around 14 years old from the legendary coach of the Pittsburgh Steelers, Chuck Knoll, who once said that pressure is something that you feel only when you don't know what you're doing. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Really hope you guys uh, enjoy the content uh, as much as I enjoy doing it. You know, it's something I really like doing. It's, it's really, really enjoyable to me. And, um, you know, as I learn, you learn, right? So what you see on the screen, uh, this video will be another passing concept video. And obviously you see the, the big guy in, uh, you know, bigger letters than the rest of these guys. It's the Hank passing concept. So I've went over these passing concepts here. If you don't know what Lion is, uh, that's pretty much the double slants. I think that's the name that they pretty much give it, Lion. Um, we went over, so Lion double slants is, is pretty good against uh, double high safety defenses. Um, you may want to be aware about throwing it against cover two zone uh, because you can get like uh, those are particular big shots from the defense because you're running into a particular defender. However, I still run it against double high, right? You know, maybe the quarterback can put the ball place it in a way in which, you know, he doesn't put the receiver in harm's way. So you can run it against double high cover two zone too, right? You just read the second defender in. Uh, if you don't know much about that passing concept, obviously go check it out in my video feeds. We went over the levels passing concept. Again, this is really good against double high safety defenses. Smash is really a passing concept. I only like running against cover two um, zone primarily. You can run it against cover two man if you have a particular inside receiver that's good against man-to-man -man coverage. Um, because the corner is playing inside leverage and you're running that outside corner route. Um, but, you know, I just don't like the amount of separation, you know, a corner route from the inside slot against two man particularly, like, creates in most cases. But it's definitely doable. But it's really good as, against cover two zone because you're getting a high-low read. On that outside corner he can never be right right uh, the snag concept I run it in every single game that I play almost it's really good against single high safety defenses primarily cover three Salem is a good passing concept to run against almost any zone coverage I've noticed because uh, you really just pretty much uh, any spot drop coverage because you're, you're getting a high low read and you're, you're just never right right as a zone defense dropping to a particular landmark Right, you play the middle of nowhere. We can throw the deep dig or the underneath uh, spot route in front of you. If you, you know, play in the window of the dig, we throw underneath. You play underneath, we throw the dig. Right, you're just never right against Salem. So Salem is a concept. All these passing concepts you should add to your your repertoire. Right. So I highly go check them out, guys. The Hoss passing concept good against single high. Yankee passing concept good against single high. I mean, after watching, like, my videos or, or learning some of these passing concepts, I really don't think you should ever have a problem against cover three zone uh, opponents. Like, you really just shouldn't. There's just so many different ways you can attack cover three zone, right? And lo and behold, I'm really upset that the Hank passing concept is my eighth addition to the passing concepts folder. I really do think it should have been the first one. Because uh, I truly do believe in foundation, like knowledge and building from there. Maybe I didn't know, I didn't think too highly of this concept before, but man, this concept here really, really, you know, conceptually like adds to your understanding. It deepens your understanding of overloading and getting a numeric advantage against your opponent. So let's go over it. The Hank passing concept is something that's really good against double, uh, single high safety defenses. So I hate doing this, guys. I always do it. So just skip 15 seconds ahead if you're sick and tired of seeing this. I don't care what defense you play in the game. It falls under one of these six different shell coverages. So always remember this numeric sequence, 422031. Two zone and two man here. This is a double high safety side. This is the single high safety side. I don't care what defense you pick in the game. There's like 700 different defenses, whatever it is. When you condense it down, it falls under one of these six different shell coverages. And this is another thing about base understanding. When you understand the base and build from there, you understand the foundation. Because you understand the weaknesses of cover two zone, when an opponent picks some type of cover two zone with the blitz underneath, 
because you understand the fundamental weaknesses of cover two zone in general, you can better understand where to attack when they manipulate their coverage with particular defenders in cover two zone. Same with two man, same with cover three zone, cover three match, cover one, cover four. That's why it's very important to understand the fundamental weaknesses of these six shell coverages first, and then you build from that, right? Okay, so the Hank passing concept is something you want to use against single high safety defenses. It is not very good against uh, double high safety defenses. So let's get into it. What is the Hank concept? Let me lower this guy. And it's a pretty simple, what's crazy is, man, like I, I've been playing for like maybe three weeks. I don't think I've seen an opponent run the passing concept of Hank one time, right? Or passing concepts in general, right? I've kind of noticed like, all you see are like gimmicky, you know, hot route, like your entire offense. And, you know, you try to manipulate with slants and out, you know, maneuvering leverage with, you know, slant from this side, slant from this side, roll out, try to, you know, stuff like that, like gimmicky stuff that you don't really see in the NFL. And I really do think it's because when they see a passing concept like this in their playbook, they think, where am I, what am I going to do with this? This doesn't look like it gets anywhere, right? But when you start running all these passing concepts, like your offense is just like so hard to stop because there's just like nothing they can do. You throw an interception, it's really on you or it could be a fundamental flaw in the, in the game. But let's get right into it. So basically what you get, you get an over the ball route. This player here, your outside receivers are running about a 12 yard, uh, 12 yard curl route. Okay. And then you have flats by this player here, about three yards off, about three yards off. That's it. That's your Hank passing concept, okay? Now, the reason why it's so good, so against a single high safety defense, so let's say cover three, right? The reason why it's damn near untouchable against cover three, right, is because remember what I said about X out theory. So like the 422031 that's predicated on the outer shell of the coverage, right? So in cover two zone, the outer shell of that coverage would be your two deep half safeties. They are the outer shell. In other words, they are pretty, like, if anything gets behind those two players, it's a touchdown. That's what I mean by outer shell. Well, the outer shell in cover three is, well, you know, take a look at the name, is these three players here, right? Deep third. They're responsible for the deep thirds. If we think of a scenario where this guy like runs a double move and he bites on it, th that's a touchdown, right? As opposed to, you know, this player running a double move, this linebacker jumps on it and then he runs up the field. Well, he didn't pass the outer shell of the coverage, right? So you may be able to get a big play, rip it in there, but you still have safeties and, um, you know, the outer shell able to rally and make a tackle, right? So, this is how I look at defense when I play. So, you know, you don't have to take this to heart. But th this is just how I see it. When I see stuff like this, I just use the X out theory, right? When you're looking at passing concepts. Because you're the outer shell, you're going to be a lot more conservative because you don't want nothing to get behind you. And this is where the numeric advantage comes into play with the Hank passing concept. Over the ball, flat, curl, curl, flat, right? So how many defenders do we have underneath? We have four defenders underneath, but we have five routes being ran underneath. Five against four. That's what football is all about, getting a numeric advantage. Two on ones, three on twos, four on threes, and five on fours. The Hank passing concept puts a five on four underneath to these four underneath zone defenders. So if you go into my video in regards to what's the difference between a soft squat, clout, flat, hook curl, and all that stuff, I mean, pretty much this would be... It's just a like rough shoot, guys. The hook areas, curl, and then you like have your flats, right? And then obviously you have your seams, all that type of stuff. So think about the hook curl defenders. What do they do? Well, at the snap of the ball in cover three zone, they're getting to their landmarks and they're widening. They're starting off in the hook area and then they widen to the curl, right? Hook, curl. This guy's starting in the curl. This is why he's the curl flat. 
you know, opens up, gets deaf into the curl, and then he widens out this way. Same with this player. And there's your four players underneath. And these three are, are. So the first read in this play is your over the ball route right here. With these guys opening up and expanding, he's your first read. Because when they open up and expand, he's wide open in the middle. You just rip it into him. So that's your first read. And you know what? Why don't I play it? So I wanted to showcase this on a practice field. I'm like, no, let me do a live game because I'm going to run into a cover three opponent, you know, a single high opponent. And what? lo and behold, here it is. I'm like, you know what? There's no huddle, you know, uh, Hank concept. We're going to go to our first read here. So there, there's the play right there. Looking at the middle defenders. See how they whiten, right? Right over the ball, about five. And I threw it late, too. You want to throw right at the... I, this ball should be gone right now. I threw it late, but that's fine. So I'm like, all right, no huddle. I'm going to stay in that defense. You know what? I'll run it again, even though it's not practical to run it again. But this would... I, I just knew, like, this will showcase the power of understanding what this play is designed to do. So that was your first read in the play, right? So if you go off a of pure progression, remember, pure progression reads are one to two to three to four. You look at one, is one open? No. Then look at two, is two open? No. Okay, look at three, is three open? Okay, he's open, throw it to him, right? That's a pure progression read. As opposed to post-snap reading, where you're looking at defenders, keying which de what this defender does in this uh, double high safety defense, and he dictates where you go with the ball, that, that type of stuff. Well, this can be used more as a pure progression read, or, you know, you can post-snap read if you want. But your number one will be this over-the-ball route. Now, if you, your next question would be, well, who's the number two? Well, you actually have two number twos in this particular play. And it may seem a little confusing, but I would make this guy the two, and I would make this guy the two. So why are t the two on opposite ends of the field? That makes no sense, right? And then your threes would be these guys. So how do you look at two over here and two over here? Well, what these guys are going to open and expand, right? But let's say this linebacker doesn't open and expand, and he decides to drive on that over-the-ball route here, okay? Think about the X-out theory. We're not worried about these outer shell coverage here. Look at this player here, right? He's going to open up and widen because he's, you know, curled a flat. With this player closing on the over the ball route, what does this what does that do to this player? Well, when he opens up and widens, there's a two on one deal here, right? If he widens to play the flat, we can throw the curl. If he stays in the window of the curl, the flat is wide open, right? Because this linebacker so basically what you do in this particular passing concept, your number one read is the over the ball route. Whichever linebacker from whichever sides decides to squeeze on that route, then your number two is to the curl route on the side that he cheated from, right? That's just because now you're getting a numeric advantage on that side because he didn't open up and widen this uh, to the side of the field. So I believe that this is what happens on the very next play. Yeah. Look, he decided to pick this linebacker. When I saw this, I know, obviously, because the play before, I threw to the tight end right over the middle, right? So he's supposed to open up and widen, but he's going to sit and squeeze on the route. So now we read two to three on this side of the field. This guy can never be right. X out theory, he's the outer shell of the coverage. We're not worried about him, right? Where is this guy? In the window of the curl. We're going to our third progression region, as I should first down okay it's all about you know don't like i don't know why I, maybe some guys just don't like getting six yards five yards seven yards eight yards you're throwing jabs right it's all about constraint theory that's why the hang concept is just such it should have been a, the the very first passing concept i went over it goes over so many different concepts and one thing it's really about constraint theory i think it's called where you go with your bread and butter until your opponent overplays your bread and butter and then you exploit them for being dishonest right so you force them to be honest again and then you go back to your bread and butter and that's encapsulated all in the hank passing concept you play honest by opening and widening with your you know linebackers in the middle 
And then once you start cheating, like he did with that linebacker, now we punish you by going to the side that you cheated from because now you're leaving your curl flat player out to dry. The two on one deal. No huddle. Yeah. Did I run it again? And then that's when, when, when once you, so you throw the jab, you know, he's like, oh, that doesn't really hurt, right? Five yards. You throw the jab again. Oh, it it, it, it kind of, it doesn't hurt, you know, six yards. You throw the jab again, five yards. Throw the jab again. Now he's getting pissed off, right? So then they start defending the jab. Now they're leaving their face wide open to get smashed, right? And that's when you throw, you set up your haymakers with your jabs. You don't set up your jabs with your haymakers, right? That's the best way to do it, right? So what do you think an opponent can do while playing cover three zone against the hang passing concept? They really can't do too much, right? They would have to severely manipulate the integrity of the coverage to really defend the hang passing concept from cover three. And what I mean by severely manipulate is maybe this guy wants to start jumping the curl route, right? He's the outer shell of the cover. So what do you do in that instance, right? Obviously, your receiver would come back to the huddle and maybe tell the offensive coordinator, hey, you know, when we run this split from this particular formation, I ran that curl, I noticed that the outer shell, this guy here, started jumping. He got played a lot more flat foot when I ran that curl route, right? For one, you, you want to run the curl route as if you're going to, you want it to make it look like you're going to go upfield so this guy doesn't, sit flat on that particular route it's all about route running you want it to look the opposite of what you're doing so that's one thing but if no matter what he's still sitting flat that's something you want to tell your coordinator or your quarterback so now you set up something where you run the same concept but on this side of the field he's going to run a curl and go right so you sit you get ready to jab for that curl he jumps it and then you turn around you run up and that's a touchdown right so the, you know that would be manipulating the integrity of the coverage what's worse maybe this guy right now he wants to drive on that over the ball route, right? I mean, there's so many different things you can do with that because now the deep middle of the field is wide open. So I think I've, I've even seen like uh, in one of the playbooks of the game, the snag concept where, you know, the player running like the little snag route, like fakes the snag and then goes up the field. Uh, that may be a particular instance where you've been running the snag over and over again and now you get somebody not being honest anymore and jumping that route and then you punish them for it, right? That's what the jab is all about. The jab is setting up the haymaker. So I think I'll run it again. And here we see exactly what I'm talking about, right? We ran the, we, we threw two jabs. This guy's already pick, picking the deep middle safety in cover three, right? When do you ever really see a player play deep middle safety in cover three zone? You, you just don't because if you notice when players use their players in their defense, they don't select players in the outer shell of the coverage subconsciously they're afraid of giving up a big touchdown like if you ask them hey how come you don't play these players in cover three they probably don't give an adequate answer but subconsciously it's really because you don't want to be wrong in what you're doing and then now someone's wide open for a touchdown right so and when i see this i'm like ooh, you know let's go back a little bit okay we see you see this linebacker he cheats over. So I'm automatically looking for number two now. Is, is this one to open? Or, or if you want to do pre, you know, post-snap reading instead, once you see this, you look for the second defender in, right? Does he sit in the flat or does he play into the curl window? Well, here we see he plays the flat so we can throw the curl. Throwing rhythm. Look how I'm throwing the ball before he, he's even, like this is perfect here. Right at the end of my drop, the ball's already getting ready to be released. So I've already read my, my keys. Look at this window, all from this passing concept, right? You also see this guy's open for his as well because both linebackers cheated in on this linebacker, right? So both of these guys are hung out to dry here. So think about what this passing concept does, right? So we saw that he severely manipulated the integrity of their coverage by playing the deep middle safety. So then you can go to another passing concept. What about the Yankee passing, passing concept? I think I just recently went over that passing concept, right? Now in the NFL, that's something you can run and you get a high-low read on the deep middle safety because if he gets a little too antsy and drives on that over-the-ball route, you have that deep post. 
wide open if they don't switch it up on the outside with the corner. But in the game of Madden, you will never get that because the computer in deep middle safety never drives in that, that over the ball route, right? That over route. So you can throw that over almost over and over again in, in, in Madden. But I've noticed when players play deep middle safety against me, I run the Yankee passing concept. They drive on the over ball over the uh, route, and I'm just throwing that deep post, and it just looks so beautiful, right? So right away, we made this guy manipulate the coverage and play in deep middle safety, and that's a passing concept I was thinking about going to. Hey, I got to go to the Yankee passing concept. He picked this deep middle safety. I can exploit that. The only problem is I don't think I have a Yankee passing concept in my playbook that comes from this formation. Right in the Yankee passing concept, you really have closed splits, so that I don't think that's something that I can complement with the Yankee passing concept. Uh, Yankee with Hank in my playbook, right? Because if I go to another formation, he's not going to think we're running the same stuff. The Hank, so why would he pick that deep middle safety? So just give me a little something. So I, I guess I chose to run here because he overloads the side, and you know, what do we get here? The animations in this game is so dog shit. Like, that should have been like a tackle at the line of scrimmage, and we get like six yards. So, ran Hank again. You see, he's this player. Let's see if I made the, the best decision. He should squeeze on this route, so we should be looking over here, right? There's a second defender in. Ball should have been gone. So here, I'm indecisive. This is not good, right? Remember in the play two plays ago, the ball was already getting ready to leave. So the ball should be, you know, on its way to this player here. So that's the problem with throwing late. I throw late, and what I like about this, you see how he drives to the ball, right? You should be taught as a receiver when you curl like that, to not just sit and wait for the ball to come to you, you should drive to the football, right? If you're sitting there and you wait for the football to come to you, a defender over the top of you can be driving while you're not driving, and he can overtake you and, and take the ball, right? So you drive to the ball, so you make it almost impossible for that defender to take the ball, which I couldn't believe that my receiver actually came through the window like that. Like, I couldn't believe this guy would just not get out of single eye his first drive, right? I think I ran it again. And we see he's this player. Look at that. I mean, this video just encapsulates everything with this Hank passing concept. I think we hit every player in the read on this drive. First play, we hit the over the ball. Second play, we hit this curl. I think the third time we ran it, we threw this flat here. Last play, we threw this guy. And I think on this play, we threw the flat. Okay, over the ball, number one. Not going to throw that because he's this guy. Okay, look at our second read. Is this guy going to get in the window? Gets in the window. So where do we go? Three. Yeah, it's not a lot of yards, but... It's still that jab, that four-yard jab, right? Think about it. If, the, if you got that same play three times in a row, it's a first down. Second and six, third and two, first down. Second and six, third and two, first down. Then he starts doing something where he takes the corner and he wants to drive on that, you know, and then you just start exploiting the fact that he's manipulating the cover side. And taking again, too. I'm picking this play over and over and over again on this drive. You, you don't necessarily have to do that. That's something you can add in your repertoire from a variety of different formations. You run it maybe once every seven plays. He'll, he'll never know it's coming. And whenever he's, you see single high, you can dial it up, and you, you just have a high success rate on the play because he just doesn't know when it's coming. You could be running a whole plethora of different things. <laughs> I don't know if I ran it again, the Hank, but let's see. I did it again. Okay, he's that player. Over the ball's not there. Look at number two. 
Uh oh, someone's in the window. That's obviously the curl flat player. So we we go to three. I was quick with my read in this one. Right? So I, I think it goes like this. I went immediately when I see this. So I shouldn't assume. So I think this is a problem that can be a leak in my game. But just assuming like he's gonna take this over the ball away. So just like even right now. Not even within the first step of my drop, I'm already reading for my second read. Right? And when we see this, like just in rhythm, you're th I'm throwing to my third read and probably like the fourth step of my drop. <laughs> Which may be a little bit early, right? Yeah, so I think that was a little bit early. That's why we only got three yards. But even then, I'm still satisfied with it, right? I like the jabs. So, I mean, when you see a guy like this, he just sits in cover three despite you just meticulating down the field with ease. Now you can go through all the passing concepts that are really good against, against cover three. I can run stick. I can run snag. I can run Salem. I could just pick this guy apart right up the field. So let's go and see what else I did. So look, it looks like I'm trying to run the Salem concept over here. Probably going to, I think, I think I hot run it. I don't remember. Let's see. Look, I, so... I'm running the stick concept against – oh, I remember what happened. So I see this alignment here. You see how everyone's bunched inside? He's out leveraged out here, right? You see how there's no one over the slot receiver? So we can just – I mean, granted, stick is good against single high regardless of whether or not he's out here, but it just makes it worse with no one covering the second – the number two over here, right? So I run the stick concept. He should clear out this outer shell and – I don't care what this guy is doing. He, he can never properly defend this route being this far inside. So that player was the outer shell. He was running an invert cover two. But again, it doesn't matter. The second defender who's supposed to be responsible for the, for the flat way too far inside to properly defend that. So I don't think I ran, ran Hank again. So I think I'm going to leave it at that. I did, well, oh, by the way, I did score. Just throwing it out there. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, what I, what I like about that drive, you know, I was happy I got it because I'm like, oh, man, I hope I recorded this, right? Because it just encapsulates everything about the hang passing concept, right? We went to our first read in, in the very first time we ran it, and then he started overplaying for that route, but then that there's, there's always an answer in the hang passing con concept against cover three, right? You overtake the over-the-ball route, and now that puts a numbers disadvantage on whichever side the cheater comes from, right? The cheater would be whichever inside backer is supposed to play curl flat. I mean, hook curl, right? So when he cheats inside, now your curl flat player is in a two-on-one game against the curl or the flat. He has to make a decision. Whichever one he defends, we throw the other one, right? So where can you find the curl flat concept in your playbooks? Let's take a look at that. All right, so I picked the Saints playbook, and you go to the concept folder, and obviously they don't have the name Hank in uh, – a particular they don't have a specific folder just for the Hank concept I'm trying to think of another concept they don't have like Haas they don't have a Haas passing concept um, you know it's just you know it's Madden for you right game's been out for who knows 25 years um, and they still don't have stuff like this in the game so what you can do you can go to the medium pass folder and go to your curl uh, folder and that's where you will find you know Hank passing concepts in the folder, but because Hank doesn't have its specific folder for its own, you're going to find a whole bunch of stuff in there that really isn't Hank passing concept type stuff, right? So you got to know. So like this, 
definitely Hank passing concept. Basically, what you're getting, you're looking for the an over the ball route. Got that here. You have two into the flats, and then you have your two curls, right? And that's when you know, okay, this is the concept like Hank, right? It puts a five on four deal on the underneath defenders in cover three, and obviously you can run it against cover one as well. Um, against cover one, uh, you're really gonna look to throw more so to your curls. You'll see when you snap the ball, maybe I should have included some online footage of this, but you guys will get the drift. When you run, you'll see this over the ball route, you'll see the defender you know, play man against that. It'll be a little bit tighter window because they're a man as, a, as opposed to zone. And, you know, it's just a natural read. You'll read to whichever side you feel more comfortable with with your outside receiver, and you'll have to throw that curl route. Now, obviously, the window will be a little bit tighter because they're in man, man coverage in that zone. But, again, it's still great against single high guys. The hang passing concept, um, I highly advise you put it into your repertoire. So it's just another weapon you can use against single high players, right? So this is one. So look at this. This is why I love football, man. You can run stuff from a variety of different formations. So when I saw this, I'm like, hey, you can run the – it depends on how this guy runs his route. You want it to be over the center, like over the ball. This is my opinion, right? So maybe I'm wrong. Maybe a football guru can like correct me on that. But it's all about the spacing and the concept. You want to stretch the four defenders. You don't want two routes within the same area because then one defender can properly defend two routes. So you're not getting a five on four, you're getting a four on four. And then again, like like I said earlier, you don't win games playing one on one, two on two, three on three, four on four. You want a numeric advantage. And how you get that in the Hank passing concept is by, again, stretching defenders. You do that by properly spacing. So I talk too much. Let me go ahead and play it. I think I picked this play here. And I mean, again, this is how you can have never run a particular play in your playbook before in your life. Be playing against a guy playing cover three, you're like, hey, you know what? Let me run the hang concept against this guy. So give, give him something different. Go through your curl concept and you see something like this. Like, hey, I know what's supposed to happen here. I know this is my first read. If they cheat on this side, I go to the cheater side and work the curl flat, right? This is not the hang passing concept, right? You get a high-low read here. Uh, let's just go ahead. And I don't want to make this video too long. Okay, what the fuck? Excuse my language. What? Why? 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 Okay. Why? Because he's running a hitch? These guys are horrible, guys. Like, they're just so bad. They're just so bad. <laughs> they're just so bad. Like, this is a passing concept in itself. It doesn't belong in curl. Sorry for my phone. Like guys, I like I, I hate the fact that like we love football and we're like we have to deal with this shit. Like it's so bad, right? It's just so bad. So I like this too. You see this? So again, we would like for him to run over the ball, at least in my opinion, right? You see how you can get a, like a different wrinkle? We stack the receivers on this side. Maybe you're getting issues where when they're playing cover one man to man. You don't like the fact that the corners are on the on the outside are very aggressive on those on those routes on the outside. Maybe your players have a problem getting it off press. So now we alleviate that issue with these stack receivers, right? So you can still run the hake passing concept from this particular formation. You throw a wrinkle in it, right? And we get our flat and then we get our curl, right? Same deal. I think it's highly dictated on how this guy runs his route. If he runs his route like too close to this, you almost ruin the entire concept right okay w why what this is levels why because they're running curl flat on this side like oh, whatever dude like i don't know <clears throat> this is curl flats right see um, you see you can run it from a five wide uh, empty set right gun empty trio you, you could have never ran this before in your life. And you're like, I'm going to run, you know, the hang passing concept. This guy's sitting in single high all game. And then you see this formation like, hey, let me run it, right? I've actually, and I'm going to show you a play and how the hang passing concept really taught me on manipulating the zone coverage in cover three. And I picked a play that wasn't the hang passing concept, but I knew, 
how it would manipulate the zones underneath due to my understanding of the Hank passing concept itself, right? This is why I think this should have been the very first passing concept I came out with. So I think I went with... Uh, and then understanding the play, you may understand like hey. this play right here, right? Obviously, I would want him to come here, right? But why have him inside? Uh, you know, granted, maybe teams run it this way. I don't know. I just thought it would be more optimal. How about we motion him outside so we get the proper spacing here, right? So you give them a different look. You come out in this formation, and they see you motion this guy outside. They're wondering what the hell you're doing. And the next thing you're like, oh, we're running the hang passing concept against your single high, right? So I think I'll motion him here. And again, the reads are all the same. You, you know, you read over the ball, right? You read over the ball, and you see this hook curl defender is not playing into the curl. He's cheating onto the your. So then you would read two to three. I think I messed up here, and I went this side, right? But I still threw it a completion. But the proper read should have been, okay, we don't like him. He's the cheater coming from this side. We read over here. You know, he's in the window, so we should throw this guy, right? And little things like that, like coming from this formation, because we have three receivers on the side, that probably played a major role in why the hook, the second hook curl defender, instead of widening this side, because we have an overload on the side, he wants to kind of cheat this way first. So this formation opens up this side of the field on the weak side because you have so many numbers on this side, right? While playing cover three. So, I mean, you, you can create spatial problems just with formations alone, right? So, I mean, the reason why this guy was open is because, you know, this hook curl defender, yeah, he plays on the side, but the curl flat, had he have widened into the curl, and then this guy, it would allow this guy to play into the flat, right? But whenever you get a player playing in no man's land, where he's not really in the window of a particular player, well, then it just kind of, it's still a two-on-one deal on this player, right? So that's why we're still able to throw this. So even if you're wrong in your reads, right, where I, the cheater side is really this side, but I look this side, if you get one player playing it wrong, you still, I'm looking for this player, oh, okay, he's in this window, I throw over here, right? If he was in over here, and now I want to throw into this window, and this guy actually got into the window, that would be my fault, because I didn't read the cheater side, I went the opposite end, right? So, a little babble. So I want to show you one quick thing about what I was saying earlier of how I ran a play that I've never ran before, um, maybe 10 years ago in Madden, but I was playing a game against a single high cover three zone or cover one. I don't remember what it was, but it was single high. And I was just going through the playbook, you know, in the, in the you know, the flow of the game. And I ran into this play here. It, it just stopped me, right? And I'm like, wait a minute. This is like the same, what I, you know, the same principles of stretching underneath defenders and cover three. Why can't I make this, we can make this the same reads. If this guy runs over the ball, we would like for him to run over the center, right? But if they squeeze on that route, it's a two-on-one deal on whichever side the squeezer comes from. And I ran this in a game, and it, it, it was to perfection. Had never ran the play before, at least from my recollection. But my understanding of the passing concept from uh, what the Hank is designed to exploit translated into understanding what this play was all about. Again, X out theory, right? These three are, you know, the outer shell of the coverage. We get a five on four deal on these defenders. That's why spacing is important, right? This guy ran his, his route over here where this guy is. This one guy can defend both routes. And now we get three on three over here and one defending two over here. It'd be a problem. That's why you got to, you know, space yourself out to where it's impossible for one defender to defend both. So as you see, I mean, we see cheater. Boom, right? He's even cheating a little bit. So we can look for the second defender in. You want to defend, we can throw here, right? So this is a play where you could just throw in rhythm against single high 
especially cover three, and there's nothing they can do, right? They would have to severely manipulate the coverage, right? And then that's when you just kind of like throw the haymaker and knock them out. So I'll leave it at that. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I really do hope that, uh, you know, learning this Hank passing concept will greatly, you know, impact your understanding of, of spot drop zones, or how to attack, high, low, stretch, vertically, horizontally, the way it, it really helped me to, to better see the game in regards to, uh, you know, exploiting zones underneath and stuff like that. So I'll leave it at that and hope you guys enjoyed.